So when I was 15 and I was learning to code, at the time we had this um, experiment proposed by one of our uh, coding professors that take up any topic you want and create a program in C++ out of it and show me and I'll grade you. And a lot of my friends were coding, you know, database systems or something uh, to, you know, manage their, pro uh, their school profiles or something like that. And I said, why not use that library uh, for creating uh, computer programs and use it to make something artistic? And at the time I started experimenting with these mathematical equations and I made a code out of it which looked pretty artistic. And I said, hmm, maybe I could submit it. Or if the professor doesn't like it, I, you know, it's okay, it's a failure. I can try again next time. But the professor really loved it. And little did I know at that time that this particular program, I would be developing it uh, over the next 15 years and it would eventually to space. So here I want to show you uh, an image of where it is right now up there in the International Space Station. So he, what you see here is in the middle, a gallery, a gallery of about 64 artworks that was selected to be part of this project called the Moon Gallery. And my artwork is actually one of them. And my artwork consists of something which is physically hand-drawn also and in a very tiny one centimeter cube space. And it also includes a memory chip which has some of these simulations, which I'll show you later. So when I was a kid, I did not know that this is what I would end up doing. I was, I was always an artist and I grew up thinking that art was something like a hobby, you know, or, uh, you know, personality that you need to have, uh, you know, being non-serious or just being a rebel or something like that. And uh, because I was good at math and science uh, and I was part of the Indian society, I was pushed like everyone else into, you know, pursuing a career as a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer. And so at age 12, I told myself that, you know, I'm passionate about three things. One is space, one is art and one is science. And since I didn't really have many role models at the time, it's only later on that I met that I saw that actually a lot of people were doing something like this, which is working at the forefront of art, science, and space. At the time, I didn't really have a role model. So I said, why not invent my own kind of career? So, and at age 12, let me tell you this, I have rarely met people who have decided what they wanted to do at that age and gone on to achieve that. Or even if they have achieved it, I don't know if they're actually happy doing it because at age 12, you don't really know everything which is out there and there, there's so much you get to learn when you you know pursue your undergraduate or your master's or go on to do a PhD or something. When I was 12 I didn't really know what I would be doing after school so what I did I applied everywhere and somehow I got through everything uh, that I applied to so engineering, architecture, design and I started off with a course at the National Institute of Design in Ahmedabad and once I was studying there, I realized that maybe it's a bit too early to, you know, quit. I was uh, it, to quit science altogether because I really wanted to understand the space uh, technology from the eyes of uh, an engineer or a scientist. And for that, you need to do the basics. You need to learn the mathematics, the physics behind it. And so I left my design course and I started. I pursued physics. And when I was pursuing physics, I realized that this was also not complete because I was missing out on so many opportunities of learning about how something is actually made. So that's when I applied to something called Ecole Polytechnique in France. And I, it's quite, it was quite uh, competitive and a prestigious institute uh, in France to study at. And I got through and I came to France. And here again, while in this course, I saw that I could actually go on and study space uh, at this institute called Supero, and I applied. And once I was at Supero, uh, I decided that, you know, even here, I need to learn, I need to continue to learn. And I said, okay, I'll 
what I'll do is I'll pursue a PhD and see what research actually is like. And then I got into a fantastic PhD program. And this is when life threw its lemons at me. And it was a moment where I had to decide whether I make lemonade out of it or I change the vegetable, you know. So, um, so yeah, I was, it was a phase in my life where I was plagued with health issues. Um, I wasn't really sure in which direction to go. And, you know, in all of this, I went back to where I started, which was with art. And I found that the world of art was something that was, that came so naturally to me that more than just being a coping mechanism for a lot of these uh, hardships that life throws at you, which also included the COVID pandemic, by the way, um, I found that being creative, being creative, not just about, so when you're doing engineering or uh, you're building some technology, that also requires a lot of creativity. But that's creativity with a bit of purpose. Because when you're doing something artistic, there is actually, it's the opposite of anything that is structured, right? So it is lacking by, in its core fundamental state, it lacks any logical interpretation, which is why sometimes you find artworks that you don't really connect with, and sometimes it's something that just speaks to you instantly because art is such a subjective field. And I would not even call it a field. I would just say it's the anti of a field. So these days I work with uh, a lot of projects uh, which explore this intersection between art and science. And instead of it being interdisciplinary where you have different people with different backgrounds coming together and creating a lot of these projects, it's more towards something called anti-disciplinary, where it's the same person who's doing a lot of things. And a group of these people who come together, they brainstorm and then they try to find new ways of doing something different. And this is also what kind of drives innovation. So this graph that I'm showing in front of you, it's a graph that I was uh, experimenting with during my PhD. It's the sinusoidal curve multiplied by the exponential curve. So it's a sinusoid, you know, it's like this. And when you multiply with the exponential, it keeps increasing in amplitude. And while studying this, I realized this sort of also defines how life can be for most of us. And the important thing is when you find yourself at the bottom, you find motivation to take yourself to the next uh, height. And then once you're there, you should also not get complacent because it will. there's always a chance you'll go down again. And once you're down, you have to, acknowledge that you know you're in a down phase so just stay motivated find the next one whatever floats your boat so during my PhD I also experimented with something called an analog astronaut environment uh, this is a photo that which was taken in high seas uh, moon base it's in Hawaii so Hawaii expectations you know beach uh, volcano in the background but this Reality is actually that we were on a volcano and we were, and this moon base is built there and it simulates what, an, what a confinement mission for an astronaut is like. And while doing this, we had a lot of uh, scientific experiments and here you see me in a EVA suit, uh, extravehicular activity suit. And during this experiment, we, we were looking at how isolation can affect uh, crews how you need to have that routine. So you, you've heard that astronauts on the International Space, Space Station have a very strong, uh, very strict routine. And we realize why that's needed if you're stuck in isolation. And during this time, I also realized one more thing, which is that as a human being, I cannot just be a robot. I needed to have that element of culture, of art in my life. And what, and this, once uh, this experiment ended, which by the way, was in June, 2020, uh, sorry, it was in uh, January, 2020. Um, three months later was when the global pandemic hit and everything basically shut down. So while doing these kind of experiments, uh, I realized that uh, in the pursuit of knowledge, of curiosity, I had left home. I, had, uh, I grew up in Delhi, uh, but my even Delhi is not really my home. My parents, they are from Assam. And so for me to be here where I am right now, 
my parents had to leave their house first in Assam. And then growing up in Delhi, I had to leave Delhi to come here to France. And then even when I was here in France, I explored a bit. I did an internship in Brazil. I went to Hawaii to you know, do this experiment uh, on, uh, as an analog astronaut. I have also been traveling a bit around the world, looking for inspiration, studying languages, different cultures to understand how different communities have evolved and adapted to different harsh environments. And I realized that when you're that far away from home, even on earth, you tend to miss home a lot. And you cannot just stay, uh, you know, you cannot just continue being an engineer or being in a technical field and not think about what makes you human. And this was such a big lesson for me because I did realize that I was very far away from home and I had to go to art, to culture, to all of these activities that are not the usual technical fields that uh, we study to feel complete. And then this made me realize that our future societies of space tomorrow, maybe may, be it on something orbiting the earth like the International Space Station, or uh, there's something called the Lunar Gateway Project, which is going to be on the moon, something like the International Space Station on the moon. There'll be a lunar base. And as we all know, Elon Musk wants to send everyone to Mars. And so you, you're going to create a lot of these bases. And when you send humans, of course, they're going to be the ones who are physically fit to go. But then if you keep sending a lot of humans, it's not always going to be the most psychologically resilient people or robotic or, you know, they're going to start looking more like average people. And so this experience which taught me was that you can do a lot of these science experiments as much as you want, but after a while, you're going to need some art and culture in your life. And so this is what I'm adopting as the next strategy in my career, which is to study how art and culture has actually uh, influenced human society to continue to advance and has also things go a bit too far. Artists like, no, 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 wait, we have to think about planet. We have to think about our, uh, our home. We cannot just keep destroying everything in the name of progress. So you, as an artist, you also need that dialogue, you know, and you need to be able to, uh, so the, the role of artists is also very important in this, uh, this domain of space exploration. And, and uh, as someone with a technical background, I feel that I could be useful in that way in which I'm also giving some of my technical expertise, but also mixing it with a lot of these artistic and cultural projects. I don't know how many of you actually recognize this, this image. This is called Earthrise. It was taken on board the Apollo 8 mission. So everyone knows about the Apollo 11 mission because uh, Neil Armstrong was in, on it and he landed on the moon uh, along with uh, Buzz Aldrin. But he, these are not the only two people who have been to the moon. There have been people in orbit. There, there are actually about 24 people who have been there to, uh, in or near the lunar surface. And this photo was taken by Apollo 8 while it was in orbit around the moon. And then they saw this image of the Earth. You know, and this makes one you know, dream that what would it be like to see the Earth from that angle or from with that view? And it could be in orbit around the, uh, the moon. It could be from a lunar base itself. I don't know if it will be done in my generation or in your generation or even in your kids' generation. But I would like to end with this question, which is once you see this view, how would, what kind of, what part of art and culture will you bring with you so that you can appreciate this view even better?